Hello, and welcome to this quarterly video of TSP Funds. Over the quarter, the COVID-19 situation has been well contained with a positive effect from vaccination and no emergence of new variants, aside Delta. At the same time, growth momentum has been softening while inflation continued to rise, reinforcing the theme of a stagflationary environment. Regarding monetary policy, most central banks have continued to exhibit an accommodative stance However, the Fed announced a faster taper than anticipated starting in November. Finally, in China, we saw some mounting risk with the regulatory crackdown, disappointing growth figures, and the Evergrande saga marking the end of China's property boom. Against this backdrop, financial markets displayed a mixed quarter after reaching highs in August. On the equity side, while Thailand slightly rebounded over the quarter, Asian market ended on a significant drop, penalized by China. Developed equity were unchanged. On the fixed income side, after being positive across the summer, global bond market ended on a stable note. In Thailand, government bond index was also almost flat, while corporate bonds continued to be resilient. Finally, on currency market, the THB continued to weaken on the back of Thailand uncertain outlook and the Fed support to the Green Bill. In this context, TSP portfolio delivered robust performance over the quarter in absolute terms. Only preserver had a slight negative return due to the strong rise of interest rates. In equity, main contributors of this performance were Goldman Sachs Global Core, investing in global stocks, and Tisco Strategic, focusing on Thai markets, while JP Morgan China was the strongest detractor. On the fixed income side, the flexible fund Jupiter Dynamic and Pimco Income were the top contributors, while KFX Income detracted the most due to its long duration bias. For the coming months, four main themes should drive the markets. Firstly, the recovery remains strong overall, but is decelerating, and the rising inflation sentiment should reinforce the case for the stagflationary risk. Secondly, on the monetary policy side, Despite rising risk of tightening, we expect the not enough growth narrative to remain dominant. Thirdly, China's slowdown is now in the figures, and policy action will play to counteract it. However, recent negative developments in the country must be monitored carefully. And finally, politics and geopolitics could play a role looking forward. Many countries will go to the port in the coming months, and the outcome may shape economic policies over the medium term. At the same time, geopolitical tensions are on the rise. The stagflation risk is still balanced by easy financial conditions and accommodative central banks. On financial markets, despite potential pressures on corporate margins, there is no evidence of a profit recession. Overall, we consider it is not a time for any structural de-risking and we remain around neutrality on equity markets with a focus on quality. On the government bond side, current yields are still too low and inconsistent with the robust medium-term trends in the economic growth and debt. Therefore, we maintain our defensive stance on red duration in developed countries. Finally, on credit markets, carry remains one of the main pillars of our view as the economic backdrop and global reopening are supporting fundamentals and risk sentiment. As a result, we remain constructive on credit investment grade. Over the last quarter, while we remain around neutrality on equity allocation, we initiated some rotation in our regional allocation and fund selection. We became strongly underweight on Thai equity due to the acceleration of COVID contamination and the low level of vaccine rollout. Within the country, we also decided to increase fund diversification with the introduction of TISCO long-term equity fund. In Asia, we decided to reduce our exposure to GP Morgan China as we turned more cautious on the country. Recently, we also decided to reinforce Japan equity by purchasing Pikte Japan equity opportunity. After the resignation of Yoshihide Suga, we expect the new prime minister to bring further stimulus into the economy. Alongside this, Japan is also experiencing exceptionally strong EPS growth, and valuations are not stretched, unlike other developed markets. On the fixed income side, we reduced our holding in Jupiter Dynamic Bond 
and PIMCO Global Bond Funds. Two funds that are very sensitive to interest rate moves due to their long duration. To conclude, a word on the key benefits of TSP. TSP funds offer you a very simple way to diversify your savings and to have access to the best experts in investments. These are the key drivers for long-term performances. We thank you for your support and attention, and we'll meet you again for the next quarterly video of TSP Portfolios. TMB และธนาชาติเปลี่ยนเป็น TTB เปลี่ยนเพื่อให้ชีวิตคุณดีขึ้น